On a rainy Monday afternoon down the Jersey Shore, the George Washington Colonials come into Kessler Stadium to take on the Monmouth Hawks in the final non-conference action of the season for Monmouth. And alongside former Hawks coach Erica Kaufman, Delia, I'm Joe Vasile. And Erica, Monmouth looking to bounce back from two straight losses in their last two games and looking to end things on a high note today. That's right, and they're coming off a really quick turnaround from their game at Georgetown this past weekend, and they're really looking to put together a full 60 minutes of Monmouth lacrosse to come away with an important win before they enter conference play this coming weekend. GW picked up its first win of this season in their 8-10 opener against LaSalle, and Kerry McKeever has been great for them so far. She absolutely has. She's been a consistent producer from the midfield for George Washington. She's recorded a goal in every game this season. And just this past Saturday, she had a career performance with four goals to help GW register their first win of the 2023 season against A-10 foe LaSalle, which gives her 12 goals on the year and current title of GW's leading scorer. And for Monmouth, we'll take a look at Caroline Brennan, who plays attack wearing number 23. She leads her Hawk squad with 19 goals and 27 points so far this season. She's only in her sophomore campaign, Yet, Brennan has registered a goal in 25 straight games and a point in 27, a streak I know she will work hard to continue today on her home field, trying to get a win before conference play starts right here on Saturday. Well, those two leading scorers going at it today. You see the numbers they put up in their last games. Very impressive totals for both the grad student McKeever and the sophomore Brennan throughout this season, Erica, and should be really fun to watch those two kind of go at it today. Yeah, it absolutely will be. You have two big-time scorers representing their programs. Mammoth coming off of, even though it was a loss at Georgetown, a really effective attacking production day, something they're going to look to build off of today. It's Maya Brock taking the opening draw for Mammoth going up against Whitney Moran. And we are underway here today as George Washington controls the opening draw and will set up on the attack for the first time. Colonials at one and five this season. The one win in their 8-10 opener on Saturday against LaSalle, a 12-9 victory on the road. Under first year head coach Colleen McCaffrey. And very patient on this first possession. Katie Letterman. And her pass for Kiki Rote rolls all the way out. Sent an early turnover for GW. So here come the Hawks looking to set up first time on the attack here today. Monmouth averaging nearly 12 goals per game through their first nine. Five wins, four losses. Back-to-back -back losses, though, to Johns Hopkins and Georgetown in the last two games for the Hawks. And to end their non-conference slate on a high note here today. All right, one of the things that's so effective about this attacking unit from Mamas is it really doesn't matter whose ball, who has the ball, because they're all so effective when the ball is in their six, as you can see right there with Cassidy Orban with her first goal and Mamas' first goal of this game. But really, any seven of them are extremely effective and they can score in a variety of different ways. So you can take one weapon out, like Orban, who's just so effective, and take another look at her goal here as she takes this 1v1 opportunity, rolls to her left, keeps the stick in her right, and just able to bounce it off the turf past Caro for George Washington. But again, seven players in that offensive unit, and there's been some shifting in who's always over there and just all really effective and scoring in a number of different ways. And a lot of experience at the right places for the Sox team. Orban with her 16th of the season, the MAC midfielder of the year last year, was an all ACC performer at Vanderbilt before transferring over. And has been just a, a terrific addition to this program over the last couple of years. She surely has. She's been so impressive to me, really, in all facets of the game, defensively, offensively, in the midfield, on the draw circle. She does it all, and she brings, like you said, a wealth of just experience and leadership to this Hawk team, and she's really been invaluable. So trailing one nothing, George Washington. Look at a, what a solid possession here. Emily Mowbray. 
Takes it off. Here's McKeever. You can see a lot of movement and talk and handing off. It looks like Mama's starting in their zone defensive set. And I've spoken with Jordan a couple times about Mama's defense this year. They're the more veteran facet of the game. Um, a lot of leadership and depth, and it's given her the freedom to kind of run different defensive sets depending on who they're playing and what they think will be most effective. Ball checked free, and it's going to lead to our first free position of the day. One for George Washington. On the way in, shot goes high. And it looks like Orban might have even gotten a stick on that to deflect it wide. Monmouth, after the successful backup, Matty Murphy dumps off. And Monmouth doing a nice job defensively to take two draws, both won by George W., really limiting their opportunities to get the ball back in their attacker's sticks. Murphy will have the restart. You can see on the outside hash, not with a great mm -hmm. angle to go to goal, taking yep. the situation to pass it off. Uh, Brock there, who's done a great job putting up numbers for Mammoth, recently just hit a pipe, but able to keep possession with Mammoth here. And back into who we just talked about in our opening, Caroline Brennan. Able to finish to give Mammoth the second goal of the day. And I know that's something they were hoping to do today was to start really strong. And even though they lost the first two draws of the game, again, defense able to minimize George, w, uh, George Washington's scoring opportunities to get the ball back. We'll take a look at this goal again to see how it winds up with Caroline Brennan here. Touched a couple of sticks before making its way inside. She does a great job as she's fading away from the cage to bury it right past George, w, uh, George Washington's goalkeeper for her second score of the day. Really quick in there for Caroline Brennan. Now 20 goals on the season. To make it 26 straight games for her. Having scored a goal. And that's such an impressive record to play. Not only that consistently, but consistently through what is a true freshman and sophomore campaign for Caroline Brennan. Give an assist on that one to Manny Murphy. As the draw one here by the Hawks, Brianna Falco able to pick it up. And then a turnover generated by George Washington. Stella Ray picked off the pass and she's off to the races. And Stella Ray, if you look at GW's statistics, she really leads them in those types of hustle stats like cause turnovers, like ground balls, a really big presence on the defense for GW. Mammoth won their first draw. Unfortunate miss pass there. But again, a mistake by GW, able to put the ball back with Mammoth. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those mistakes by the Colonials so far today. And team that is on the young side and looking to rebuild and compete says inside another goal. It's Shea Berrigan right in front of the crease, making it 3 nothing Monmouth. And again, we've seen multiple players touch the ball here on these scoring opportunities. They haven't really been these fast breaks. This one starts with Caroline Brennan again, who we've already talked about, with a great feed inside to true freshman Shea Berrigan, who's another consistent scorer for this Monmouth attack. When you talk about the Hawks wanting to come out and start fast today, that is exactly what they've done. Three goals in the first four minutes. And you know, Jordan Troutman's got to like what she's seeing from her team. Energy-wise on both ends of the field, the defense to force a couple of turnovers and then to capitalize on the offensive end. For sure, and it's funny that you mentioned good energy because that's something just uh, Coach Jordan Troutman and I talked about just last night. She was saying that this team has so much good energy, even coming off of those two losses. They're able to see the good things that they've done, and they're really excited to build off of them. And they really wanted to come out strong today, play well, and put themselves in a position to get an early lead, maybe get some fresh legs and get some players some time who don't see the field as often before they really get into the heart of their conference schedule. And the whistle blows about 20 yards out. It's a little bit too much contact mm -hmm. from Mangum there. But again, talking about this defensive unit, Mangum being able to play high up and to put that kind of pressure on ball 
Uh, she's able to do that because of the solid team defense behind her. And again, another great hustle stat for Mammoth as Shannon Feely is able to track that ball down behind the cage to get mm -hmm. possession right back. It feels like pretty much every 50-50 ball so far today, Mammoth's been able to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Aside from those draw controls where George Washington has a little mm -hmm. bit of an edge, everything where it's been loose on the field has been Mammoth so far. Hawks set up on the attack. Once again here, looking to make it a four-goal lead early on in the first. Looking to feed it inside, and Caroline Brennan was checked as that pass was coming in her area, and so Brennan going to get set up here. And Spears is one of the leading assists. Mm -hmm. uh, makers, game playmakers on this Mammoth squad looking for Caroline inside. And they know Caroline Brennan is a goal scorer, so no surprise she got a lot of pressure inside that eight as the ball was fed to her. And with the ball in her stick and a, a whole head of steam and a lot of confidence, able to convert on that free position mm -hmm. to extend Mammoth's lead to four. And Brennan, if there's one area of the game that hasn't been tremendous this year, now three for ten, on free positions, but able to just walk right in and get it past keeper Mia Caro. Right, and you can see as she approached the goal, she pulled the stick to her left, was able to seal off her defender on her back, brought it back to her right, which is really hard to determine her strong side because she's so good with both, but mm -hmm. pulled it back to her right, was able to just put it low right past Mia Caro. 4 nothing Hawk lead already. Just really impressive work, and Nice close-up view there, as you can see Caroline Brennan taking care of the footwork, protecting her stick. A nice strong shot from point blank range to give Mammoth that four-goal early lead. And a timeout taken by George Washington. Colleen McCaffrey trying to rally the troops a little bit here. I mean, it's been obviously a, a tough start, but for GW, some of it's just been some bad passes and some self-inflicted wounds. As you said, bad passes, I was thinking self-inflicted wounds, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they haven't really taken care of the ball as well as they're going to have to to have any sort of success and really get anything generated on their attacking end. You've mentioned they've displayed some patience as they've worked the ball around looking for good opportunities, and it's just a combination of their mistakes and Mammoth's hustle to get those 50-50 ground balls that gives Mammoth the lead here. Mm -hmm. If you're GW, what do you have to do different on the attack to make sure that you're you're maintaining the ball better? I mean, it really just comes down to fundamentals. It really comes down to focusing on their game plan and taking care of the ball. There's been some drop passes. There's been some errant passes. And it's just a matter of calming down, knowing that there's a lot of lacrosse left to play and they're not out of it, and just coming back to their game and doing the things that they know how to do. And they're hoping to start that right here with this possession. Haley Bolton walking in. And we'll feed it back. X for Shea Baggett. Good roll goes low. And GW's on the board as Shea Baggett with her first goal of the season. And really nice play there for Shea Baggett. As you'll see when we take another look at this, shows some patience, is able to just get right inside of Brianna Falco, which is unusual for her to give up that position there, especially around the crease. And you'll see that here as she comes around from behind, Brianna Falco is all over. She just gets a step inside to get that inside lane. And even though there was help there coming, able to get that shot off and bury it to that low right corner. First of the year for Baggett. A sophomore from Madison, New Jersey. We'll see if that can give George Washington a little bit of spark a goal after the timeout. And then they win the draw control as well. And those are two important plays to string together back to back to get your first goal on the board. And that's important just for momentum and confidence purposes. And then to come away again with another draw control where they do have the edge over Mammoth at that center circle so far. GW has struggled on the offensive end this year. They're averaging touch under eight goals per game. And the 12 that they scored against LaSalle over the weekend was their highest goal output of the season. Haven't necessarily backed down in the non-conference, and that probably 
plays part of the role there, but they're a team that, that's really looking for that flow offensively as Whitney Moran scored, but it's blown dead. There was a whistle that ended the play right before Moran's going to have uh, an, an eight meter here, but Moran has been another strong player for George Washington transfer from LIU coming in this year and it's been their second leading score and a chance to score again just ripped it right away it looked like it ricocheted off a pipe our second mm -hmm. pipe so far today um Gia Mitchell feeling pretty grateful for those pipes surrounding her right now is just an extra line of defense there Kimber Germer back to Bolton Shannon Feely marking her defensively. Now double team to ask to pass out and blow the whistle. Washington gets organized. And Germer switches hands. McKeever looking at Moran and she hit the post again. Because that shot was on cage as it made contact with the post, GW gets a fresh set of 60 seconds to work with here to try to put the exclamation point on this attacking opportunity. They've had some good looks, more so than we've seen so far today, just really unable to finish. And again, another unfortunate pipe there, but... I always tell the girls that I work with and that I coach, I, I'd rather see you hit the pipe and hit the goalie because at least that means you're shooting for the space. So eventually those are bound to land. Ball down and Mammoth picks up the ground ball. Great play by Rachel Stresdens, the junior from Rochester, New York, to get to the loose ball. And the extended possession for George Washington turns up eventually in a turnover. But look at this. Near missed opportunity by Moran. A little bit of miscommunication from the defense. You don't need a ton of space to get a shot up and across, but again, just another pipe, our third of the day. So it's not uncommon to see those pipes hit, but I don't know that I've seen so many in such a short period of time. Uh, good thing for the goalie, a little bit frustrating for those attackers. Huck cycling around. Brennan looks to go inside, and there's Berrigan again going low and beating Mia Caro. And it looked for a moment as you saw Caroline Brennan up top, thinking maybe she'd take that 1v1 right to cage and take that strong line. Um, but you could see Berrigan cutting right across the crease here, getting herself a step in front of her defender for a quick shot, turn around and buried it low. Five goal first quarter for Mondev and a four point first quarter. For Caroline Brennan as Berrigan picks up her second of the game and just well executed. And speaking of Brennan, who we talked about at the highlight uh, at the beginning of the game, um, involved now in four of Mammoth's five goals in one way or another. So mm -hmm. that just, it just shows uh, her importance for this attacking unit. Draw here, won by the Hawks as Falco. Got it on the wing. You can see Maya Brock often will, uses her height and will self-draw to herself, trying to use that height to come away with the ball, which she did there. Quick flick to, to Falco, who often is the one who comes up with the draw controls off the ground, just unable to take care of the ball. Silly mistake here to put the ball back with GW. Um, it fails on the clear. Not a true clear, but... And we'll call it a clear. We'll call it a non-goalie clear, but sure. we'll call it a clear. It's been an area where GW has, has been pretty good in terms of opponent's clear percentage. Top of the A-10 conference so far. Top 20 in the country. Through traffic, the shot is good. What a goal 
by Amelia Moran, her second of the year, dodging around four defenders. And it was funny, I was just about to comment on the defensive pressure, having multiple white shirts around every blue shirt, somehow able to weave right through with that left hand up. And even though she, the white had numbers around her, uh, she's able to get that shot off to close the gap for GW, get a little bit closer to Mammoth. Tough play by Moran. Sophomore from Delray Beach, Florida. Get it back to a three goal game as that was a big one for George Washington to, to try to bounce back after that quick goal by Mammoth. We've seen when the Hawks have scored today, it's been real fast strike kind of offense. It has, and that's something that they've been working on and really putting all the pieces of it together to finally execute it. They have the talent, they have the personnel, they know what they need to do. It's just a matter of working in those tight spaces, taking care of the fundamentals, executing everything. And they feel like they're due for that type of game to really put it all together, which we saw a little bit of that on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, unable to come away with the win. But the pieces are there, hoping to carry that into today's game. Yeah, that was a game where Mammoth led 13-9 to over Georgetown at the half. And then the Hoyas came out and played a nearly flawless second half of lacrosse. Come away with an 18-16 win. Yeah, we talk a lot in lacrosse how there are shifts in momentum and there are runs, but really none more significant for both teams than what we saw on Saturday between Monmouth and Georgetown. Run up the middle, and that is Germer. And it's a two-goal game as George Washington starting to really generate some good opportunities on the attack and back-to-back -back goals for the Colonials. Right, able to win the draw is creating more opportunities and it's a really strong drive here right through the middle of the eight using the turf for the bounce shot to skim it right past freshman goaltender Gia Mitchell. And again, like you said, within two goals and that's, that's really important timing here being down four goals at one point to narrow that gap to two and gain a little momentum off the draw control where GW edges Mammoth five to three. And now that they've kind of settled in, are taking care of the ball a little bit better, seeing what works against this Mammoth defensive zone, able to put some more points on the board. Brock looking for the whistle there. She drew to herself. She thought she got a little bit too much contact or contact toward her body. Doesn't get the call. And GW just continuing the fight as they come away with it. So a chance for the Colonials to get it back to one before the end of the first. They've scored two goals over the last minute. And now you can see Maya Brock heading off to the sideline yep. there. A little bit too much contact on that check. Puts her in the chair next to it, as you see on your screen, for two minutes. So Mammoth D will be playing a player down against a full seven on GW. Power play chance. And you know, as they they get closer in score, this is a really big, important opportunity here for GW to take advantage of the player up situation. Cassidy Orban really fighting to cause a turnover there and prevent it from getting down into that eight meter, 12 meter critical scoring area. Gets called for a foul. Minute and a half left to go on the penalty. So still plenty of time for GW. And Mammoth D was just a little bit more ground to cover for each of these players as they work this zone with the player down. Shea Baggett. Back high to Germer. Starting to advance in. Back up high, Germer. Has some help in front. But defended well. Inside a minute left to go on the penalty. Pass across GLE. And the whistle blows against the Hawks. Great and position chance for Emily Mowbray. Nice look inside to Mowbray. She just gets a little bit too much contact there as the ball comes into the eight meter, puts herself on the line. Mowbray walks in, fires low and scores. 
So speaking just a moment ago about shifts in momentum, this quarter started, it was all Mammoth. The last couple minutes of this first quarter have been all GW, as now they are within one goal. We'll take another look at this free position opportunity. She just comes in with that left hand up, seals it off, and again, they've done such a nice job of using the turf here uh, and bouncing the ball in past Gia Mitchell. And again, put GW within one goal, so much closer quarter than we thought it might be just five or so minutes ago. Four goals in the first quarter for George Washington. Matches their most goals in a quarter this season. And they seem to be a team that's started a little bit slow, mm -hmm. picked up that first win, and is really riding on some momentum and some confidence. They have the one conference game under their belt. They're preparing for the rest of that conference schedule. And today's a big test for them to see what they can do. Or correction, they scored five against LaSalle in the first quarter on Saturday, but starting fast for the second straight game. Quick ball movement here on their transition, looking to get a fast break. Gonna go back high to Kiki Rote, and the pass is taken away by Monmouth. And we saw a lot of those missed passes early on for GW, but they've really tightened that up, and, and it feels like that's part of what's helped lead them to the success. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to generate those good scoring opportunities if you're not taking care of the ball. All the way through the midfield where Monmouth is known to put some pressure on and just, you know, possession is the name of the game in lacrosse. I feel like I said it at least once a broadcast, mm -hmm. uh, but it's true. It really comes down to possession. So Hawks back on the attack. What do they have to do to get a little bit of momentum back here? Well, I don't think it's taken too much for Monmouth to score when they've created the opportunities, and that starts from the draw and those defensive turnovers. They've done a nice job of hitting a number of players and scoring in a couple of different ways, so I don't think there's really too many corrections they need to make here. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping the ball down this end more than it is down the opposite end with their defenders. That was Brennan who had the shot backed up by Shea Berrigan. 30 left on the shot clock. Pass for Brock got away. Twenty left on the shot clock, and Hawks can have a, a great opportunity here. Marissa Legera right in the middle. She goes low and a save made by Caro. Yeah, right from that top center hash. Took a good shot. Caro made a great save. And then you had right there Kiki Rote able to come up with the deflection of that shot to avoid Mammoth getting a second chance opportunity. First save of the day for Caro is a big one. Now GW with a chance to tie this thing up. Right, they have just under a minute to work. I know that doesn't sound like a lot of time in, in real world, but in lacrosse, it's more than enough time to put really not just a point, but possibly even multiple points on the board. Mm -hmm. And I know after coming from a big deficit, they would love to end this first quarter tied. So they're going to work here to create that right scoring opportunity. There is no shot clock in play as there's 30 seconds left to play here. They get a shot off, unable to finish. Great hustle though from GW to keep it down this end. It was Kerry McKeever who had the shot. Whitney Moran plays it back high across, and there's the equalizer from Amelia Moran. And it looked like there was some miscommunication there on who was going to get the ball on that goal line. By the way, they wave oh. the goal off and say it doesn't count. But take another look. She was wide open in the middle of that eight meter for a catch and shot. Um, like you said, goal waved off, so ball back here with the Mammoth defenders. With just 13 seconds left to go. Hawks looking for something quick. All right, looking for those big passes. The ball moves much faster than feet do as they get that inside pass. Look to Brennan, just unable to hand a little bit too far ahead of her to create a scoring opportunity as we round out this first quarter. Mammoth still with the lead. GW unable to tie it up, but really able to close that gap and really make a game out of this today. Got a good one going in West Long Branch. Monmouth by one at the end of one. Watching the Monmouth Digital Network on Flow Sports. Monmouth Hawks with a 5-4 lead over the George Washington Colonials here at Kessler Stadium. Alongside Erica Kopp and D'Elia Joe Vasile with you here today. That was a, a first, Erica, where Monmouth led 5-1 and George Washington 
closed out with three straight goals and had a chance to tie it up before the break. Absolutely, and all the credit to GW for even though they found themselves in this early uh, deficit, just fighting to come back at, out of it and close that gap with Mammoth. And we really have a game here after one quarter of play. One area that George Washington really helped itself in the first was on the draw control. 6-4 advantage over Mammoth in that category, but the Hawks will take it first here in the second. Right, great job for Brianna Falco to come up with that draw. And you can see a GW defender really all over her back to keep possession with Mammoth. See what they can generate out of their attacking unit in the second quarter. Caroline Brennan, pair of goals, pair of assists in the first quarter. Yeah, they call space against GW as it was Alex Ophirio just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time when Allie Major caught the pass. Yeah, great look inside. She found herself wide open, and that happens a lot defensively when you're trying to recover and catch up that you find yourself in that shooting space. Colonial's able to come up with the stop, now looking to clear it out of their own end. That was a great save by the keeper. Nice ground ball pickup for GW. Came loose, but a good play by Cassidy Orban. And Mammoth looking to make this difficult for GW to get the mm -hmm. ball out of their midfield because the shot clock is ticking. And the more time they can force to get the ball into the attacking 30, the less time their true attackers will have to work with the ball. It was 55 seconds left by the time it got into the attacking third of the field. Great pressure by Mary Kate George behind the cage there. It's called for a foul, gives the ball back to GW. You can see her getting called behind for the infraction. Genevieve Muller be ready to help out there as she mm -hmm. kind of monitors two blue jerseys. Mary Kate George having to go back and forth a little bit before she's in the, the perfect right spot. Yeah, four meters behind the player with the ball if you are the one who committed the foul. A little bit longer to get that situated than typical. Mm -hmm. Here's Kiki Rote. Over to Kerry McKeever. Working inside, McKeever shoots low and beats Gia Mitchell, and we're tied at five early on in the second quarter. And there's our impact player from our open, Kerry McKeever. And you can see she got some help from a teammate working down low to create a lane for her as she drives from that inside that left elbow. Looks like she's going right, comes left. Uh, her teammate, 13, clearing out the help, so she's able to take that true 1v1 to tie the score here. Keever's first of the game, team leading 13th of the year. And we're three-time All-American at Division Three Gettysburg. Prolific scorer, national champion at that level. And has made the transition to, to George Washington really without missing much of a beat. Absolutely, to come in in her first year here with a new team and a new coach and lead her team in goals is really impressive. And, and like you mentioned, if you look at her stats and what she was able to produce at Gettysburg, really impressive. So she has transitioned, I would, I'd say, seamlessly to this new level of play. Draw controlled by Monmouth. Now, even up. In terms of draw controls today, six apiece. Seems like GW has just won them at very key times, though. They have, and they've been able to capitalize in those key situations. Looking for the cutter, George Washington able to get the turnover. Then a foul is Monmouth pressing. So George Washington... On a four-goal run right now. We're going to take the lead for the first time today. Big burst of speed, far side for Amber Germer. 
Bolton. Only played two games last year. Did Haley Bolton, but now in her sophomore season, seeing a much larger role in this Colonial's attack. Rote. It's four stouts. Emily Mowbray. Back over to Rote. Fifteen to shoot for George Washington. Whitney Moran gave it up. Ten left. Mowbray again. Good pressure from Mammoth being able to prevent GW from getting a shot off as the shot clock winds down. Get the turnover with Falco. Scooping up the ground ball. An excellent defensive possession for the Hawks. Really strong defensive stand. They seem to be a little bit more organized that time in handing off players and switching and talking and preventing GW from getting that strong drive to cage that we've seen a few times today. Orbit on the run. Now Murphy. George Washington doing a good job of packing things in, and they create another turnover. All right, Brock looking for Brennan. Pass just a little bit too low for Brennan to handle, and great speed there and great hustle for GW to get that ball back. Katie Hip carried it forward. Now Whitney Moran rolls to the inside and is forced back out. And that's unfortunate for GW, who looked like they had a wide open player right in front of that mm -hmm. crease, ready to take advantage. And a foul called further up top. So Shea Baggett. I have this one left hash. Right. And as much as you don't want to put a player on the line, uh, they had a wide open shot right in front of Gia Mitchell. And there's not much any goalkeeper can do when an attacker is on the crease undefended. Whitney Moran hits another post. Third time she's done that today. McKeever recovers, reset the shot clock to 60. Boy, Moran has just been so unlucky. <laughs> it really is frustrating from an attacking standpoint to create opportunities, which arguably is the harder part, and just not be able to finish, but being literally within centimeters of the ultimate goal and putting the ball in the back of the net. There's the first save of the day for Gia Mitchell off the shot from McKeever. Gia Mitchell, a true freshman, doing a nice job for Mammoth. It really was a battle to see who would get that starting nod as there are two other keepers on this Hawks roster. Um, and she's just been really steady. That's the word Jordan Troutman, head coach here, used to describe her. She's been steady. And that's exactly what they need from her. And she's, she's faced some strong competitions. Mm -hmm. We talked about Mammoth playing some top programs. And she's just rising to the occasion and growing from that level of competition. And they're really pleased with what she's been able to do so far. And she spent all but about 32 minutes this season in net for Monmouth. Is thrown right into the fire as a true freshman. And it was funny because when I was talking to Coach Troutman about that, she was saying sometimes as a freshman, the lights can be a little too bright or the opposite might be the case where you don't really have any fear because you're not quite sure what to expect. Caroline Brennan able to break the run for George Washington. And she buried that one past Mia Caro. And you'll see her with such a strong stick. She's able to weave right through that eight meter. Nice quick dodge to the right, brings it back to her left, cradling through a crowd and able to get a nice strong high shot off to give Mama the lead once more. That's Brennan's third of the day. Already a hat trick for with 8.29 left to go in the second quarter. Just uh, another great start for one of, the, one of the best players in this area. She really is. She's got such a nose for the goal. 
I say this all the time. She came in and did not play like a freshman. She is so proficient with both hands. She's so smart in the way she moves around the eight meter. She's very tall and she uses that to her advantage. And she's just a complete attacker. And she's come through at some really big moments for this attacking unit. So one goal cushion for the Hawks. Hard fight for this one, and GW comes away with the bouncing ball, Stella Ray, and call a foul against GW in the midst of all that. Mammoth will take it. Ball with Orban. That's exactly whose hands you'd want it to be, and she can create so many opportunities, not just for herself, but also for her teammates. McNeely up top of the ball, another young player, just a sophomore who's been an impact player from her freshman year as well, along with Brennan. So it's a really nice duo with the two of them. McNeely a little bit more of a two-way player than Brennan, but really uh, productive on the attacking end of the field as well as the defensive. Yeah, we haven't said McNeely's name a whole lot today just yet, but that's somebody who Jordan Trapman said at the beginning of the year, it's maybe under the radar, but wouldn't be for too long, and, and that's really been the case with her play this season absolutely i saw her last year here have a breakout game and really hasn't looked back since then she's been such an important part on both ends of the field for mammoth mammoth threw a double team there and, and great hustle by gw one player holds the body the other gets a check to cause that turnover and gw coughs it up a long pass up ahead murphy able to get the loose ball and now George starting the run. George, who's taken on more of a leadership and more of a defensive role. She's another one who can play on both ends of the field, but has really become a leader for this Mammoth defense. Shot and another goal for Caroline Brennan. And she does it again. And you would imagine Brennan, after the breakout freshman season she had, would be on every team's scouting report. They know what she can do. They know she's going to do it. But just like she did here, as you see this 1v1, um, she's just able to create opportunities for herself, and, and she really has a knack for putting the ball in the back of the net. So even though she's going to be on every scout as Mamet's leading scorer on a really talented attacking unit, sometimes it doesn't matter. She's still able to execute. That's how good she is. How would you defend Caroline Brennan if you had to drop a, a game plan against Mamet? I would imagine that most scouts say if she gets that ball inside the eight, you send the double automatically. But we've seen today even on a few occasions her able to navigate her way through that pressure so it's, it's really hard to do but I would have someone on her consistently and I would send that double as soon as she's got the ball anywhere inside that eight meter because we see her navigate herself around the crease quite often but she can shoot from far out too so she's that's what makes her I think so talented is that the depth of her play she's not a one-trick pony mm -hmm. um, she can score from anywhere around that eight meter Just like that, a two-goal lead for the Hawks. Four goals today for Caroline Brennan. They officially have her down as one assist, but she may get a, a second in there. I don't think they officially gave her the one on Shea Berrigan's second goal. All right, and we could see Stiba now with the draw, so the mama staff mixing that up a little bit. It's not uncommon to see her in that mix mm -hmm. along with Maya Brock, along with Cassidy Orban. Here's Ivanovich. First time we've seen her out there today for Monmouth. Play it back high, and Mangum draws the foul. Yeah, way too much pressure on her back as she received that ball. And you mentioned Ivanovich. We've seen a, a couple numbers here that you might not see this early on in the game, and that just shows the depth and confidence that the coaching staff has here at Monmouth to be able to mix up the roster a little bit and Man. know that they can still stay in this game. Mangum looking for the bounce shot, didn't get it to go, but still controlled by the Hawks. Yeah, great job by Spears to back that up and keep possession with Mammoth. Both of these teams really used the bounce today, especially with a little bit of a slick turf from the rain that's come through the last couple of days. Kind of helps it move along a little bit extra. 
Working inside. Brock and a save right at the doorstep by Caro. Really nice look inside from Brennan to Brock. Brock just caught high there, shy, and it was a great step out from Mia Caro to prevent that from being a goal for Mammoth and make that big save. Great back pressure applied by Ellis Spears that time. Forcing GW to reverse course. Stella Ray really active for GW and causing those turnovers, coming up those ground balls and getting their attack started as she transitions the ball into that offensive 30. So we'll see if George Washington has an answer to this Monmouth rally. GW now about eight minutes since their last score. McKeever just lost it. Slipped right out of the cross. Nice ground ball pick up there for Ivanovich to get the ball back with the Hawks. Little monkey in the middle there with the goalkeeper. Ninth turnover today for GW. Only four of them have been caused turnovers though. Brennan forced out. Lily Ivanovich. Double teamed and the pass taken away intended for Brock. Loose ball here, but yeah, you could see as Ivanovich had the ball, GW brought the double, forced the bad pass inside, and ultimately, after the ball being on the ground, able to cause that turnover and gain possession. Sprinting forward, here's Whitney Moran. Thought about pulling it and she gets a shooting space call against Falco. Falco trying to get herself in position. I, I'm not really even convinced that she was looking to take the shot there. Maybe a little bit of a precautionary call to protect the defender. But either way, she finds herself on that first inside hash looking to close this gap. Opts to pass out of it. We've seen Moran do that now a couple of times today. And that could be for a variety of reasons. At this point in time, they're not looking to eat any clock. Maybe she's not as confident on the liner from a particular hash or thinks that there's a better opportunity. McKeever, back over to Moran. Got inside to flex away. Mitchell might have gotten a piece of it. Yeah, you could see that. It looks like it went off of Gia Mitchell's either elbow or somewhere on her arm. Bailey Aaron has checked in for GW. She's number 10 in blue, a junior from Basking Ridge. A couple of New Jersey natives on his George Washington team. Outside hash comes up to Moran who works in low and finally got one to go. I really thought that the intention of that pass there was to try to get a shooting space call with Mammoth's D really packed in on the eight. I didn't know that she was actually going to take that shot. She saw her opportunity from pretty far out. Just a little bit of space is all you need, as you'll see right here as we take another look at this goal. She gets the ball, she's fed up top to her. She's really uncontested until the very end. Saw her opportunity. She put some heat on that one as she bounces it right past Mitchell. She hit three posts so far in the first and finally able to, to get that one in. And the way that it popped out, I thought she had hit another. Yeah, it must have been pretty satisfying for her finally. Finally, after hitting those posts, to send it right down the middle mm -hmm. and have some success and be able to convert. It was almost like she said, I'll, I'll shoot it through the post if I have to. That's right. I'm going right down the middle <laughs> and hoping for the best. Ground ball win by GW. McKeever. She Baggett settling it down. McKeever. Colonials with a chance to knot it up going into halftime. Moran and McKeever. Aaron turned away inside eight. Another one for Germer. 
and we're tied at seven. Boy, GW's ability to counter punch today. I think they've really figured out how to work this zone for Mammoth. And just on this last play, there were a number of passes. Germer winds up with the ball on a full head of steam. And, and she really wanted that one there. You could see with the score as close as it was that that was the goal. We still have 220 to play. Plenty of time to put some points on the board for either team before they head into the half. But really great second quarter effort from GW to take a game where they were down significantly really early yep. on and make it this close. It was four goals in the first five minutes for Monmouth, led by four goals two different times in the first. And I mentioned early on about Monmouth really wanting at this stage of the season to put a full 60 minutes of lacrosse together in this game. They thought this was the right opportunity. And there's been some lulls where GW, a good team, is going to fight to stay in this. And that's exactly where we are right now with the tied game. Great one-handed draw there by McKeever. Really important draw, too, with the tight mm -hmm. score and the timing just over two minutes left before you go into half. So George Washington looking for its first lead of this game. Foul against the Hawks. And even with that foul there outside of the critical scoring area, it does give Mammoth's defense a few moments to get set where they want to be and avoid any sort of fast break. Draws now 9-7 in favor of GW. McKeever starts the run in, turned away. So you mentioned George Washington starting to figure out the bomb at zone a little bit. How, how do you, you change things up if you're the Hawks just to, to make them not be as comfortable? It's possible that we see a different defensive set come out of the Hawks in this second half. I think what's really worked, though, for GW is just these fast passes, changing the point of attack, finding that second, third, or even fourth player uh, a little bit open to receive the pass, and then either getting a shot off or finding the mom of D playing catch-up and getting caught in that shooting space. Got a shot off there, but unfortunately for GW, McKeever inadvertently kicked the ball out of bounds, and so now Monmouth with less than a minute to go in the first. Trying to go back in front, halfway through. Yeah, even though there's a full half hour of lacrosse left to play today, it's, it's such a mental thing to end a quarter or a half on a high note, and especially when that ending note can give you a lead going into a break. Here's Caroline Brennan. Gets it back. GW sends the double, which left McNeely wide open. The second slide was not there from GW's defense. Gets a good shot off, just unable to capitalize to get that lead heading in. And Bob, then a turnover with about eight seconds left. Here's Orban. Orban. Finds Two it back for Brennan and another save by Caro. Kudos to Caro because that was a really great opportunity for Mammoth and they worked really quickly. They got the shot they were looking for. You can see Brendan a little bit slow to get up. Hopefully she's okay there. Just unable to capitalize. And lots of credit to Mia Carroll for making those final stops to keep this a tie game as we head into the halftime break. Plenty coming up here at the half. Don't go anywhere. Mammoth and George Washington locked in a good one. It's the Mammoth Digital Network on Flow Sports. Halfway through at Kessler Stadium. We're all tied up at seven. George Washington and Monmouth in a fun battle here on this rainy Monday afternoon. Alongside Erica Kaufman, D'Elia, Joe Vasile with you in West Long Branch. And Erica, it was a really fun first half. Monmouth came out really strong, but George Washington able to counterpunch a couple of times to erase a four goal deficit. That's right. Mammoth came out guns a blazing, ready to take an early lead. And every time Mammoth has extended the lead, we've seen an answer from Mom, uh, from GW to keep this as tight of a game as it has been. And that's what's led to this tie so far. It was five points in the first half for Caroline Brennan. She was fantastic for Monmouth. But also, uh, again, it was more of a, a balanced scoring attack for GW. That's right. GW has a number of different weapons who've contributed where it's really been all Caroline Brennan with a little bit of help from Berrigan this afternoon. And in order for Mammoth to extend a leader, I should say, to get back a lead and to win this game, they're going to have to balance that attack and, get, attack and get the kind of output they got from a number of different players as they did last weekend. 
And seeing some of the, the Brennan highlights, doing things in so many different ways for Monmouth today, whether it was catching some passes in front or just going right off the run and attacking herself. She's so good at creating opportunities for herself, and if she can't do it, she can find somebody else who can. It's been a very fun half. Still 30 minutes left to go. Monmouth and George Washington tied at seven. Last non-conference game of the season for the Hawks. Looking to break a two-game losing streak. GW looking for their second win of the season. Plenty more coming up at halftime. Don't go anywhere. It's the Monmouth Digital Network on Flow Sports. Getting ready for the start of the third quarter here at Kessler Stadium. All tied up at seven. Monmouth and George Washington and today in West Long Branch. The rain picking up a little bit. Looks at Erica Kaufman, Delia Joe Vasile with you here today. And Erica, this was a really great first half. The back and forth action and Frankly, I can't wait to see more of it in the second. I couldn't agree more. It's been a real battle, but started out looking like it might be a little bit of a one-sided game. Has not played out that way as we move through the, the second portion of that first half. Whereas Monmouth hasn't been down, every time they've earned themselves a lead, GW has fought back. And that's why we are entering into the second half a tied score. To the keeper, Caro. Get things started for George Washington. I think Caro's one of the reasons why it is a tied game. Um, she mm -hmm. really was a difference down the stretch. And when you look at the stats and what kind of sets Monmouth and GW apart right now, is that she does have five saves. And I think some of those were really important toward the end mm -hmm. of that first half, which is why Monmouth did not get that lead back heading into half as I'm sure they would have loved to with those opportunities down the stretch. They made a couple of saves in quick succession. And how big are those three posts that George Washington hit in the first half as well in this game right now? Well, it shows that they're creating the opportunities like I mentioned earlier, which is sometimes the hard part. They're getting their players open. They're getting the shots off. Obviously, finishing is what you see because that's what shows up on the scoreboard and the stat line, and they weren't able to do that. But knowing that those opportunities are there, if they keep firing away, imagine those shots just being a couple inches in a different location. This score could be very different. Wind blowing fairly moderately right to left across the fields. So at mom, it's back right now. And the rain picked up a little bit over halftime wonder how much of a, a factor that'll be here in the second half as McNeely works in close and from just outside the crease Danielle McNeely puts the Hawks in front and that was a fight for McNeely as you see her trying to go through that eight meter weaving her way in and out of multiple GW defenders able to right on top of that crease get a shot off and we'll take another look at that here she battles through all the way from the 12 switching hands meeting multiple defenders such great field awareness to not cross that crease and able to start Monmouth off on a positive note at the beginning of the second half 16th of the year for Danielle McNeely right. five point game against Georgetown on Saturday four and her first of the day here and I think it's important for Monmouth that they not rely so heavily on Caroline Brennan. And I don't think that was their intention in the first half. It's just kind of the way that it played out. She had the hot hand. We had Brennan with four of the goals, Berrigan with two, Orban with one. And to get McNeely on the board is important because I think she's such an active part of this attacking unit for Mammoth. Hawks looking for another quick one, but pass just couldn't be linked together inside. Yeah, Brennan was looking for Berrigan there, streaking inside, and great hustle by Orban to keep the ball in play with Mammoth. Another feed inside to Brennan. You can see she just gets too much contact from the GW defender, which should put her, I think, at that top center hash. And we know she takes these with a lot of confidence. And it's another good opportunity for Mammoth to start this half strong and just build off of the slightly that they've created so far. So off center at that second inside hash. Still a good angle for her. Brennan with one free position goal already today. Fired wide right. Monmouth had it there on the backup. We've seen Spears a couple times today on that far goal line. Able to keep ball in play with her team. Neely off the screen for Berrigan. Looked to find her in front, but went away. And it'll be GW ball.
Colonials weathering the Hawks attack. Now looking to knock things up. We've seen them with some really good get back ability throughout this game for lack of a better word. No, that's right. They've been down, but they certainly haven't been out. And you can see that here at some of the different stat lines. Mm -hmm. Pretty close in draw controls, pretty close in shots. A little bit of a difference in saves, as we referenced just a moment ago. And I think, again, down the stretch, that might have been the difference that helped GW keep it such a close game after the first two quarters of play. Those first half stats presented by Monmouth Medical Center and RWJ Barnabas Health. Ball checked down on the run, and Monmouth gets to the ground ball. Rolled into the crease, and Mitchell and will start it. Speaking of ground balls, that is one area in the first half that GW did have a significant edge. At that mm -hmm. point, it was 14 to 7, so they had double the ground balls that Monmouth had. And again, another reason, along with solid goaltending, that I think the score was as close as it was. And it was interesting because the, the first five minutes as Cassidy Orman inside draws the foul. Cassidy Orman drew quite a bit of contact as she rolled in, and then she was met with a double team where she got double the contact. See, a little bit slow to get up. She's as tough as they come. Card is awarded here to give Mammoth a player up opportunity. You'll see all this contact that Orban got. And no surprise, I mean, they know she's a threat. But you can see these blue shirts around here. She finds herself on the turf, a little slow to get up. But from our vantage point, she is on that hash and she is ready to go. Two minute penalty against Alex Ophirio. Give Bomet this chance. Go back up by a deuce. If anyone can do that, Orban can. Quick start. She is as fast as they come. And you can see she's able to get a couple steps ahead of the defenders that flanked her on either side. Able to pull the stick back to her strong side. Able to bury it. We'll take another look at this free position opportunity. Quick start, quick feet, pull that stick. Gets it right past uh, Carol on her non-stick side to extend Mammoth's lead. Second of the day for Cassidy Orban. And Mammoth back up by two as they've come out here in this third quarter. On a, on a hot streak, kind of the same way that they did in the first, right. where they scored four goals in the first five minutes of the game. They've just kind of controlling things on both sides in these opening few minutes of the third quarter. Right. I think the start of this second half is very reminiscent to how the first half started, like you just noted. But what's going to be important for Mammoth is to not have a lull in their effort, in their output, because we saw multiple times throughout the first half that GW has an answer, and they are not going to give up a fight until that final whistle blows. So important for Mammoth as they try to build a lead and extend it that they don't slow down. Heaver, knocked loose. GW maintains possession with hip. Number of whistles, a lot of pressure mm -hmm. through the midfield, mm -hmm. getting that all sorted as GW takes the ball behind and gets into their balanced attack. Aaron lost it but got it back. Now McKeever. Going to work inside for a shot. McKeever went wide left. She didn't, look, she didn't look like she had too much heat on that shot. She saw a lane, wasn't able to get a really strong shot off. And then this shot ends up getting bounced left, but whistle came before it. And it'll be McKeever taking it from, or pardon, Moran taking this one from just off left of center. Wound up and ready to go. She rips it. 
doesn't even move her feet. That's what we call a power shot. And all the signs in her body language pointed to that. Hopefully when we take a look at this replay, you'll be able to see the setup where she has the stick behind her. She's got her big cradle going. You'll see her right on that line as soon as the whistle blows here, that big cradle, there it is. She just barely takes a step. You can see her front foot doesn't move. And again, nice big power shot to stay within one of Mammoth here and bring it back to the center draw again. Second of the day for Whitney Moran. She could easily have five, has hit the post three times, including once on a free position shot just like that. Yeah, but the last two have been on the money. Mm -hmm. She's kind of got not sorted as she's moved throughout this game today. Good battle on the draw between Brock and Moran. One by GW. McKeever was the one who picked the ground ball up, and now GW with a chance once again to strike even. They, they've tied the game a couple of different times, never been able to take the lead as Mammoth gets the turnover. All right, great job by Gabriella Vangeli to come up with that ground ball to get possession back with Mammoth. Now Brennan. The help is there, but you could see all of her other attacking teammates far outside of that 12. No one else speaking through the eight able to make a play there, so she opts to pull that out. And off for Brock was botched. In transition, here come the Colonials, yeah. and they miss a pass. Unfortunate, unforced turnover. And I have to wonder at this point in the game, now that both teams have settled in, if the weather is a bit of a factor. Like you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, it's raining a little bit harder. It seems to be a little bit windier. And that might be contributing to some of these errant passes and drop passes. Kiki Rote. Kitty Letterman behind the net. Drop pass, but picked up. You can see as she slows things down, Mammoth really bringing on the pressure. And McKeever got it in the bottom left corner. What well, looked like it might have been a cause turnover with that pressure from Vangeli turns into a goal for GW. McKeever second of the game, and we are tied at nine. As we've seen GW now a couple of times have players run through traffic and score. That's right, and McKeever did that textbook right there, our impact player at the beginning that we highlighted. And again, Mammoth taking those risks defensively, which they're confident in doing, knowing that they work as a unit and they back each other up, just unable to get real pressure on her as she barreled through that eight meter, tied it back up. And if you're the Colonials, you got to feel really good about where you are right now, just generally as a team. You started 0-5 this year, but then you won your conference opener against LaSalle, and now you're going back and forth with Monmouth, a, a tough team on the road in subpar conditions. Right. you got to feel like, all right, we're finally starting to get it together, and, and you feel like no matter what the result is, uh, continued good confidence boost for this team absolutely it is a test for them today and like you mentioned a slow start on the season coming off of a win not ideal conditions on the road makes it even harder but really at this point in the season figuring out who they are figuring out what works and just getting better every game learning from the lessons behind them giving them all the credit for not you know throwing in the towel and saying mm -hmm. we're 0 and 5 just continuing to fight and like you mentioned earlier in the game a bit of a rebuilding year a new coach so i think just putting all the pieces together and I, I would not be surprised. I think it's a fair assessment to say that this is a team that's just going to get better the more they play together. And especially with some of their offensive struggles at the start of the year as the shot hit the side by Shea Berrigan. Right off the side of the cage and Caro starts it out the other way. You know, Colleen McCaffrey, associate head coach last year at Bryant, but before that, five years as the offensive coordinator at Virginia. Someone who knows how to teach offense and you're seeing the last couple games the improvement for gw on that end of the ball absolutely like we said her first season here someone that coach troutman knows and has a lot of respect for thinks she's going to do really good things with this program but it's just a matter of working through actual games together to make the adjustments that you need you can simulate all you want in practice but it doesn't always translate until you see it on the actual stage and the way things play out 
and they are actually have, a, have had fewer games um, this season so far than Monmouth has. I think Monmouth maybe has two more mm -hmm. on the season, so they've had a little bit more to work with, those more uh, learning opportunities to make those corrections and adjustments. So think about two games ago, and that's where GW is right now with six games under their belts compared to, it looks like Monmouth's nine, so three game. Um, difference in the number of games that they've played. So really just working things out, figuring out who they are, what works, maybe some personnel changes. And really, I think they're getting some momentum at an important part in their season. Timeout taken by George Washington. And, you know, we've talked about both Kerry McKeever and Whitney Moran a lot today. Those are two players that only McCaffrey went out and got his transfers to come in. So kind of that quick infusion of talent into the program, but also building up a lot of freshmen that, and sophomores that have seen time try to build that long-term success at GW, something that they haven't had a, a, a ton of over the last few years. Made the A-10 quarterfinals last year, but that was the first time in a few years that they'd been in the postseason. Right, and you mentioned McKeever and Moran, the two leading scorers for this GW team. And when you're looking at a college program, of course, yes, the current year is of the utmost importance as you're trying to do the best you can, make it as far into the postseason as you can. But when you're looking at it at a whole and you're looking at long term, mm -hmm. absolutely those younger players who maybe aren't quite as experienced, who are getting better every day or getting more minutes as the season progresses, that's important down your pipeline because you're going to need those players to fill the big shoes of the players like McKeever and Moran and then reloading with new players each year whether they come from your recruits or they come from transfers through the portal there's a lot of different ways in which teams can kind of reload each year mm -hmm. and the more success they have the easier it is to draw those recruits and those transfers to help build some success with the program Mia Cara their sophomore in goal with five saves today but to keep them in this one after some early struggles for the Colonials, again, another opportunity to go in front. Just inside seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe that GW has had the lead yet in this game. As many times as, the, as they've punched back, mm -hmm. it's been to tie. It hasn't been to take the lead yet. That is correct. It was 5-5, five, 7-7, five, seven, seven, now 9-9. Nine, nine. Germer. And she draws the penalty. And Amber Germer, who's had a couple of big goals, is going to have a chance here to put GW in front. Yeah, two on the day so far. And aside from just her goal scoring, I feel like she's been really active all over the field, an integral part of GW's success today. Germer walks in to shoot. And... With Monmouth having made a, a change in goal, Kennedy Fruit in net right now. A look to break out the other way. Brock, bounce shot goes wide left. Really good passing from Monmouth's attacking units. Try to work that fast break. Good shot opportunity, just unable to finish. Something Coach Trautman's been talking to the attacking unit a lot about. And Coach Kaysner, who works primarily with the attack, just finishing. Here's Brennan, six-point day for her today. Tried to get a pass, but oh, went away from Marissa Legera, and Monmouth going to turn it over. So another opportunity for GW to go in front. That, that's been the other thing is Monmouth, in these tie situations, has done a good job of clamping down on defense and then striking on the other end, just not able to do the, the second part of that there. Right, they started off this third quarter on fire, able to put a couple goals in in quick succession. And then you saw the output from the attack just slow down a little bit here. So that's something they're going to have to pick up if they want to not only gain the lead in it, but extend it here this afternoon. Aaron turned away inside 12. Now McKeever. Kicks it up the middle, goes low, and GW has their first lead of the game as McKeever with a hat trick. Really great take by McKeever. She recognized the 1v1, 
Mammoth's help was a little bit slow to slide, so it was a true 1v1 as she approached the cage. She's a hot hand. She's the leading scorer. She's exactly who you would want the ball with at this time when they're trying to get the lead, and she is able to do just that. And so, Carrie McKeever had four goals Saturday against LaSalle's, got three here today. And the Colonials have just done such a nice job today. They were down four early. And now they are in front for the first time. Corbin on the center draw. McNeely got it. Again, mixing up that draw there, knowing that Mammoth has multiple players who can take it and take it in different ways. So mixing up that personnel, depending on the matchup, depending on the game, sometimes just depending on who's hot. Brock turned away. You know, like Eric and now if you're Monmouth, they find Shea Berrigan cutting. And that ties things back up at 10 as Berrigan's got a hat trick today. was going to say, like, how do you make sure your mindset's in the right place? You, you, you've now given up the lead playing for behind, but didn't seem like it was that much of anything for Berrigan there. Right. If you notice, Berrigan actually looked to set a pick on Brennan. You can see Brennan got a whole lot of pressure there. As she sets the pick, she rolls right off of it. Textbook, if any of our basketball fans, similar type of motion as you would see in a basketball game, that mm -hmm. pick and that roll. Gets herself open off that roll. Brennan able to feed it inside. Got a lot of contact. Looks like she's holding her face as she's slow to get up from feeding the ball in. And we'll see. I believe she's... She looks to be still out here, ready to play, so she must be okay and good to go. But again, another big goal there from Berrigan, someone who's been a big contributor this year as a freshman. Of course, speaking of basketball, big shout-out to the Monmouth women's basketball team, CAA champions this year. Saw that package roll at halftime. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I had the opportunity to ask Coach Troutman yesterday if that big and dare I say unexpected conference mm -hmm. title from the basketball team have an impact on yeah. her girls. And, and she said it does. You, you can feel that energy. It's almost tangible. And it gets you thinking, why not us? They weren't ranked really high at the beginning of the season. They went into the tournament as the number seven. Four days, won four games, able to take it all. So that definitely is motivating, especially when it's not only your, your school uh, classmates, but some of your friends as well. Really good energy all around. Mammoth women's athletics right now coming off that big win yesterday. Won the CAA tournament down. It was hosted by Towson University. Just outside of Baltimore there in Maryland. And now Hawks looking to pick up a big win over GW. Just down the road a piece in D.C. is Brennan. Draws the whistle. But there seems to be confusion. Two different officials calling two different things. And looks like the foul against Bomith came first, so it's going to be GW ball. Parker Cran starting it the other way for the Colonials. Going to go back in front, tied at 10, inside three minutes to go in the third quarter. Nice move. The middle of the field. Long pass takes away what appeared to be a 2v1 for GW, so unable to capitalize on that opportunity. And with that missed pass, possession is awarded back to Monmouth. We've seen GW have some trouble today on longer passes. Short, fast passes, a lot of success, trying to stretch the field a little bit. They've had trouble linking those. They have. You're absolutely right. Those shorter, crisper passes, particularly in the attacking end, have seemed to be more effective for this team today. Hawks looking to go back in front. Mangum. Spears. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Play back for Orban. 
Halfway through the shot clock. Brennan. With to Berrigan, right back to Brennan. Inside to Orban, and she's denied by Mia Caro. Unreal save. Not sure if that was Orban or Spears there who actually had the last touch on the ball, but it was a great look inside. You'll see it here. We'll get clarification on that. Working together, Berrigan and Brennan, who both had big days. Hmm. Yeah, Orban's behind Claire. Yep. Spears right on the crease. She Good got call. it in her cross. Looked like she was able to get it off, but again, a really big and importantly time save there for Caro. A good call on that being Ellis Spears. Well, you could see the number 19 in your defense right in front of that. <laughs> Just a little hard from our vantage point to see who's hiding behind. Mangum. Less than a minute to go in the third. Tied at 10. And a fun one here at Kessler Stadium. Non-conference finale for Monmouth. You know, a lot of times you approach these non-conference games as they're not have to win games, but it is really nice, particularly as the last game before your conference season opens to end on a high note and to build off that as you prepare for conference play. Legal pick against the Hawks turns it over with 20 seconds to go. A chance for GW if they can strike quickly. Mama's doing a really good job of putting pressure on the ride and making it much harder for GW to get the ball into their attacking end. About five seconds here to see if they can make something happen. It's going to have to be a Hail Mary, if anything, and GW will just hang on to it. At the end of the third, we are tied at 10 apiece here at Gessler Stadium. Real good one between George Washington and Monmouth this afternoon. You're watching the Monmouth Digital Network on Flow Sports. Good one here today at Kessler Stadium. The Monmouth Hawks and George Washington Colonials tied at 10 at the start of the fourth quarter alongside Erica Kaufman D'Elia, Joe Vasile with you here today. Opening draw in his fourth quarter, won by George Washington. Whitney Moran gives the Colonials the ball and a chance to regain the lead. This has been a, a really fun back and forth game this afternoon, Erica. It really has. It's been a battle. And to be perfectly honest with you, a little bit of a closer game than I had anticipated just looking at these two teams on paper. But isn't that why you play the game? You mm -hmm. never know how things are going to play out. And I was just looking at some of the stats over the break, and it's the draw controls and the ground balls where GW has edged Mammoth, And those are what we like to call those hustle and those heart stats. And th those are the stats that show how badly a team wants to win. And GW really wants this game, and they know it's within their reach. So I would not expect to see any sort of slowdown or hesitation, knowing that they have 15 minutes left to, to really put the cap on this one and, and try their best to come away with a win on the road. Kennedy Fruit remains in goal for Monmouth. Meanwhile, Mia Caro has been standing on her head lately for George Washington. Six saves. A lot of those coming late in the second quarter and in the third. Another turnover there by the Hawks. Orban had the ball, opted not to drive to Cage, and just a pass mishandled behind to get the ball back with GW. Furio starts it the other way for George Washington. Right up the middle, Ray. Now, Amelia Moran, goal scorer earlier today. And this pass just intercepted. Laguerre, a great anticipation on the defensive end to put herself right in that lane and come away with that. And that's a huge caused turnover right there at a pivotal time in this game. A little over 13 minutes, it's a lot of time in a lacrosse game, but not only to prevent GW from taking the lead here from another tied position, but also getting the ball back with your attackers and trying to get the lead back. Caroline Brennan. Four goal game for her, also three assists. And a heck of a day for Brennan. We talked about how consistently she scores and what a 
producer she is, but I think this is definitely one of her bigger games number-wise that she's had this season. Here's Brock with the shot, and she finds the back of the net. Brock's first of the day, and it puts Monmouth back in front. Yeah, Brock's put up some big numbers lately, and that was just a textbook 1v1 she took coming off the top of the 8 meter. She has her strong hit up, and you could see she put some power behind that one, hooks it right in that top left corner, and gives Monmouth the lead once more. And so Maya Brock with her 18th. After a five goal game against Georgetown on Saturday. First of today and a big one. And the coaching staff had just such nice things to say about Maya Brock, not only as a person, but as a player now. She's really come into her role this year, not only super important for this team on the draw, but also her scoring output has increased this year as well. So just a really important part of the midfield and the attack for the Hawks. The second lead change today, despite the back and forth game, but suspect probably not the last. Just how close these two teams have been for a majority of this one. Mammoth trying to get the turnover, loose down on the ground. Murphy was fighting for it. And eventually, McGarry came away with it. Little flick to Philly to keep possession with Mom. There's a lot of back and forth there. Who is going to come up with that? And just a good fight by Mammoth to win that 50 50 ball. And that started with the good pressure from the Mammoth double team. I'm able to force a mistake. And even though there was some back and forth ultimately coming up with possession. It's Brennan with it walking in. Sent a pass and just couldn't get there. Trying to find Ellis Spears, but Mammoth retains possession. Yeah, Brock able to scoop that up and keep the ball with our attacking unit. A lot of movement away from the ball as it comes back to Brennan. Brock gets inside, went low and didn't get it, but a whistle blows. The foul on George Washington. Some discussion. You could see the officials mm -hmm. conferring. You could hear some chatter from the coaches on the sideline. And so they're going to get together and talk it over. Let's see, what do you think? Got the feet inside to Brock. Gets, definitely gets a little bit of contact with the stick on the shoulder, but I wonder if it's even the goalie coming out making contact. It's hard to see from this vantage point exactly what was called. A lot of times the advantage will go to the attacker, especially when she finds herself on the ground. So Brock has to go get the ball and be set up on one of the outside hashes. Brock heads in, shoots high, and scores. Back to back for Brock and Mammoth up two. She did a really nice job on this free position opportunity by getting just a couple steps inside the A. You can see her stick is nice and high, even higher with her height. Quick fake and able to bury it low to extend Mammoth's lead to two. Nice job by Maya Brock. Starting off this fourth quarter. And the Hawks the lead and you can just see a George Washington bench trying to rally the team find another burst of wind here 
It doesn't take much to see a momentum shift in lacrosse. It can be a big save, a big cause turnover, even just a single goal to kind of light that fire and get things moving. And this team knows they can come back from a deficit. They did it a couple times today, greater deficits than what they're working with now. Well, still plenty of time left in this game. They are not out of this by any stretch. So GW is going to keep fighting. And, and Monmouth can't let up at all either. They cannot take their foot off the gas because we've seen these momentum bursts and the, the output, the production from this GW attacking unit. GW now plus four in draw controls today. Done a, a really nice job in that regard throughout this one. McKeever. up high, Amelia Moran, knocked loose. It's great 1v1 defense there by Cassidy Orban. Just a little bit of contact was enough to force that turnover and a really important one at this point in the game. Now it's a matter to see of what Mammoth can do with it to extend this lead to give them a little bit of a cushion as we work through the final 10 minutes of this game. Danielle McNeely carried it through the midfield for Monmouth. Now Berrigan. Cross to Brennan. Trying to work her way in. Good D by GW prevents her from being able to do that. Now McNeely on the run. Look for the cutter inside. It was Brock with the shot. And Mamet there to back it up. They'll retain with 35 seconds left to shoot. Good opportunity there and great backup to keep the ball with Monmouth. Spears around back, gave it up for Orban. Now Brock again. 15 to shoot. Orban. Pass was high and got away. Trying to hit Brennan, cutting. And GW stands strong defensively. Mammoth, good job with the ball movement. Just unable to get it inside to a cutter to get a good shot off on that last offensive stance. Amber Germer. A lot of pressure from Mammoth in the midfield. Hip. Now he's into the attacking third for, uh, rather for GW. Looks like a little bit of miscommunication there on the restraining line, trying mm -hmm. to figure out who's going over. Do I take the ball? Do I go back? Do I get out of this? Slow things down a little bit for GW. Certainly no fast break opportunity, but gives Mammoth D the chance to get set and ready to defend. 7.40 left to play. We've seen GW score goals in bunches today. In multiple occasions, they've scored two goals within a minute. Nice roll behind the cage. Shot low and a save by Fruits. Great save by Kennedy Fruit there. GW attacker able to work her way inside of Brianna Falco around that crease. Created a good scoring opportunity. And looks like she shot right into Fruit's stick and Fruit was ready to make that save. Big one, big timing there. Sometimes it's not necessarily the quantity of the stat, but the timing of it that is the difference maker. Fruit coming in, relieving Gia Mitchell. It's made a couple of saves. It's preserved this lead for Monmouth. Yeah, we talked about Carroll making some pivotal saves in the first half to keep it as close as it was. And that might be another one of those important saves this time for the other team to help Mammoth eventually uh, seal this win, which is what they're looking to do here in these final six and a half minutes. Two goal cushion, not a lot in lacrosse. It only takes a handful of seconds to move the ball down the field and put it in the back of the net. But obviously a lead is, is preferred, hoping to extend that lead here now with Carly Mangum. Shoots wide right. We got there. GW did. 
looked like you had players evenly matched there on that far end of the field, but ball is awarded to GW. You know, Furio. Again, the midfield pressure for the Hawks, but GW able to navigate it. Even in these moments where they face a lot of pressure, where they've been down, uh, they, they had never been out, and they continue to fight. They continue to work through whatever adversity they've faced throughout this game to stay in it, and it still is a game. We have just under six minutes to play, a two-goal game. Two goals is, is not mm -hmm. a comfortable lead for Mom. It's kind of slow things down at this point against a good GW squad. Moran rolling, shooting low, and another save by Fruit. Another really big save there to prevent GW from closing this gap and chipping away at Mama's lead. Orbiting eventually coming up with the ground ball. You'll see her use her speed throughout the midfield and get things started on the other end. Long pass ahead, hits Brock. Off the hop for Brennan, inside, and she scores! Double fake there for Caroline Brennan. And that was a perfect fast break opportunity. It started from the D, and you could see the attackers pointing that way and giving their D and their goalie some credit to get that started. It was pass, pass, pass. It hit Orban. It hit Brock. It found Brennan, as you'll see right here, wide open. And I mentioned earlier in this game, you can't expect a goalie to come up with a save when you have an attacker, someone especially as talented and hot-handed today as Brennan has been. She pulls a double fake that just shows the patience that she has and is able to bury that to extend Mama's lead to three and give her her fifth goal, eight point on the afternoon. Caroline Brennan helping to lead Monmouth up three with 5-16 to play. And now if you're George Washington, you feel like you got to get something here. You've been shut out. Since you took the lead at 10-9, four straight for the Hawks. Since the 448 mark in the third, it's been nearly 15 minutes since their last goal. Right, and we keep talking about these stretches and these runs that happen in women's lacrosse game, and a lot of it comes to timing. And it looks like Mammoth now has all the momentum. Big draw right there by Maya Brock. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate turnover here by Mammoth, unable to do anything with the ball here. But again, a little bit more of a sense of urgency for GW as the clock ticks down into less than five minutes left in this contest. Again, the only three goals, we've seen greater comebacks happen, but it's going to be hard against this veteran Mammoth defense, and it's going to have to start right now. On the run, Amber Germer taking it all the way, shoots low. The save by Fruit, but the whistle blew it dead before that. That's right. Again, we've talked about this a couple times. A credit to Fru. She was ready. She made that low save. But Gabriella Vangeli just getting caught in that shooting space as that final line of defense making her way up to the ball. It's so hard to do that and not get in the lane. We teach to get the stick in the lane and body out. But a lot of times that call is made, and that's a call to protect the defenders from getting injured by a shot. Working in, and there it is. A hat trick for Amber Germer. And George Washington gets the goal that they sorely needed. That's a huge goal right there for Germer, and she's been so effective today. You'll see this free position opportunity for her again, right from that inside hash. Nice, strong take. Little flick of the wrist. It looked like she was going left. She turned it back right to get Kennedy Fruit on her non-stick side to close this gap with Mammoth. They're now within two. Another important draw. The draw is always important. Mm -hmm. One of the most important statistical categories. I know it doesn't uh, necessarily mean as much because points are what win or lose you a game, but those points start from possession, which starts from the draw. So a really important draw here, too, as we saw the momentum shift slightly from Mammoth to GW on that last play. It's going to be a Really important for Mom to get a defensive stop here after GW wins another draw. Germer out to Moran. To the middle. Fruit denied. That would have been another quick back-to-back -back goal. Goals for GW in this really tight contest. So a huge save there for Kennedy Fruit. And that must make her feel really good, too. Not only her and her own confidence, but her team around her. She hasn't played as much this year as Gia Mitchell has earned that starting position. 
but a game where they thought a switch might be necessary, and I think it has been the right choice so far in the second half as we've just seen some big saves by Fruit in this final stretch. Four saves for Kennedy Fruit in 20 minutes in net. Under a lot of pressure, Germer trying to shoot, checked out of her cross, loose on the ground, and Fruit's got it in the crease. So now Monmouth with a chance to, to really take some time off the clock here. To wind it down to about two and a half minutes before they even have to get a shot off if they can hang on to the possession right. that long. And since there's not a fast break opportunity for them, you can see Caroline Brennan's already behind and wide with the ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to work a little bit of clock unless an opportunity presents itself for a high scoring shot. Um, take a little time, work the ball around, stay a little spread, and as the shot clock starts to wind down, looking for that shot to extend the lead. And ultimately give GW just a little bit of time to work with at the end, if any at all. Turning his shot, good. A little bit wide, but Mammoth hangs on to it. 40 left on the shot clock. MK George with the ball up top. Mm -hmm. Plays primarily defense this year, but someone who has played on both ends of the field. Came to Mammoth from Ohio State. This is her second season here in West Long Branch. And you can see someone that we would consider a true defender, a little bit of a low defender this year, able to make something happen on the attacking end. We'll take another look at MK George's goal right here as she gets the ball up top. She's able to weave her way through two defenders, just buries it in that top left corner to extend Mammoth's lead to three with just over two minutes of play left on the afternoon. Nice when you can have a defender Step up like that, George's second of the season. And Mammoth expands the lead back up, and that one there might be the dagger on GW's chances. It's still 2.17, plenty of time to go, but it just felt like it took a little bit of momentum away from George Washington. It sure did. It deflates them a little bit. And Mammoth is a strong team, so even if GW tries to mount a comeback, that's not going to be easy. We've seen some runs. I think this draw control right here may be one of the biggest of the day with probably at the most two possessions left in this game and Orban coming up with that at a really important time of this game. But again, yeah, it deflates GW a little bit and again, gives Mammoth an opportunity to take some time off the clock. I'm surprised GW isn't putting a little bit more pressure on ball. You see MK George again, weaving her way, takes the shot low, is stopped by Caro, but ball stays with the Hawks. Rain's starting to pick up a little bit again after it had calmed down. Brennan. Mammoth can, again, take this opportunity to eat some clock or just Tack on another, and that's what they'll do. Cassidy Orban back across her body, and Monmouth, its largest lead since the first quarter. They're now back up by four. Orban taking this opportunity for a true 1v1 all the way from outside of the 12. Keeps her stick protected away from the defenders and just pulls that trigger. Again, it looks like we have the momentum shift back with Monmouth. And so often it comes down to who's got the hot hand or who's got the momentum when in the game. A lot of this comes down to timing. And Mama, through these last couple of minutes, has had the hot hand and has had possession, is able to make things happen. Two goals in the span of 49 seconds for Monmouth have made it a four goal game. And now desperation time for GW. Need a furious comeback, and it's got to start with this draw. If Mammoth is able to win this draw, they could theoretically hold the ball for the rest of the game, being that the shot clock in women's lacrosse is a minute 30. We have just over a minute 20, and Mammoth is able to come up with the draw. No surprise they're taking their time here, using their defenders. Not in a rush to get it into their attacker saying, oh, unforced error there. Great anticipation on the part of GW to come up with that takeaway. Whitney Moran able to intercept that pass. Not what Mammoth wanted to do there because had this been a closer game, a one or two goal game, that might have been the dagger. But again, credit to GW for not giving up and not only causing a turnover there, but being able to capitalize on it and close this gap a little bit with Mammoth with still just about a minute to play. George Washington goal scored by Emily Mowbray, her eighth of the season, first of the day. 
And now. And now what could have been Mammoth's final possession had they been able to hold on to the ball. Comes back to a 50-50 ball at the draw control with still some time for GW to make things happen. And we'll take another look at this goal here. She just comes right through the eight. That one looked like it hit a little bit of pipe, um, but this time the bounce went inward. And it's hard for her to anticipate the bounce it's going to take when it's coming off of the pipe. Sometimes it bounces back out onto the field. Unfortunately for her, that time it bounced in. Just saw that beautiful one-handed draw control grab by Cassidy Orban, who is Mammoth. Uh, leader in that statistical category coming up with the draw and she does it in so many different ways in the air like you just saw fights for it on the ground so frequently here's George knocked free Monmouth turns it over again 30 seconds left George Washington down three having trouble get out of their own end and it, it's a nice effort here at the end of the game for the Colonials to try to close it out strong but just time working against them here as Moran draws the shooting space whistle with 13.2 to go we've seen that call quite a few times today. and again all the credit to GW for not giving up and, and something for Mammoth to work on in these close games they haven't played in too many close games this year um, to be able to hold on to possession to not turn over the ball to not allow other teams to force mistakes and just take care of it in those really important times, which could often be the difference makers in a game. Luckily for them, it didn't happen to be, and they were able to hold on. And yeah, Kennedy Fruit made the save off the shot by Whitney Moran, her fifth, and Monmouth hangs on for a 15-12 victory over George Washington today. And we talked about it a little bit, but Kennedy Fruit, Doing a, a great job in the final 25 minutes of this one to hang on to the victory here for Monmouth. Right, we saw really good performances from, I would say, all three goalies. Gia didn't have as many opportunities to make saves, with so big saves there by Fruit in the second half. Caro did a great job of keeping GW in the game with her goaltending. And really, just a battle back and forth all day made for an exciting game to watch. But Monmouth comes out victorious with a three-goal lead over GW. Really fun one here is the Hawks with the victory improved to six and four to wrap up their first 10 games of the season in the non-conference. George Washington falls to one and six, but for Monmouth, their next game a couple of days from now, right back here at Kessler Stadium, taking on Elon. The important thing there, the first ever CAA game for Monmouth women's lacrosse, and it should be uh, really interesting to see how this team fares. A new conference this season, some different opponents some really good competition as well. It should be uh, really fun over the next month and a half to see how things unfold in the Colonial Athletic Association. Absolutely. There are some top-tier programs in the Colonial that Mammoth is excited to see how they perform against. But I think also some more uh, even teams, really, that should be competitive with Mammoth, where early in the season they saw some teams that were arguably ranked way higher and better, mm -hmm. and some teams on the other end of that where they just kind of steamrolled over. So it'll be nice to see how they fare against teams that are more evenly matched. And it's also nice for them, too, to have a little bit of time now that they play the conference on Saturdays. Gives them a little bit of break, a little time to focus on themselves, to rest and recover, because it's been a bit of a grind. So I know they're looking forward to a couple of days to prepare for conference play this coming Saturday. Post-game stats presented by Monmouth Medical Center and RWJ Barnabas Health. Monmouth outshot George Washington, outshot him on goal. Draw controls actually ended up being pretty close to even. Same with saves and a very physical game today. And so that wraps things up just about for us here today from Kessler Stadium. Monmouth with a big 15-12 win over George Washington. Been a fun one here all day long. And Hawks will be back at home on Saturday at 11 a.m. Taking on the Elon Phoenix to start their CAA play. Any final thoughts here today for this one, Erica, before we, we say so long? I just think it was a, a battle, and you give all the credit in the world to GW. Even though they didn't come out with the win, I think they have a lot of positive things to build off on as they continue through their conference play. And again, maybe not the exact outcome that Monmouth wanted with as close of a game as it was, but that team win, really something to build off of and, and be happy with as they move into the most important part of their playing season this coming weekend. She's Erica Kaufman. I'm Joe Basile. So long from Kessler Stadium.
Final score, one last time. It's the Monmouth Hawks with a 15-12 victory over the George Washington Colonials this afternoon. Have a great rest of your Monday. We'll talk to you next time. You've been watching the Monmouth Digital Network on Flow Sports.